Good evening, and welcome to First Community Antioch Bible Study, where I'll be teaching the Word of God from John chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1. Would you please join me as we reverence God, bowing our head as I pray. God, our Father, we thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your written Word. We pray, O oh God, asking that your Holy Spirit would reveal to us all the things we should know, and that we would live a life that's pleasing to you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Well, this teaching will come from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter number three, beginning with verse number one. John, 
in chapter 1, he speaks about Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Chapter 2 speaks about the first recorded miracle where he turned water to wine. And chapter 3 is a chapter that I'm pretty sure we all are, or most of us are pretty familiar with the story about a man named Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night. Now, we're speaking tonight about the new birth, the new birth. Uh, it's unfortunate today that many talk about religion, but many really don't know about the new birth. Uh, they say they're saved, and I'm not doubting them, but evidence of their behavior makes you wonder. Well, in this chapter, in chapter 3, we read about Jesus talking with a very religious and moral man named Nicodemus. And uh, Jesus told him that it was absolutely necessary for him that he need to be born again if he wanted to see the kingdom of God. And my sisters and brothers, we know that it is absolutely necessary for us to be born again, if each one of us want to see or enter into the kingdom of heaven too. Well, let's look at this chapter, verse for verse. Um, it says in, in verse 1, There was a man of the, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with you. So I just read verses 1 and 2. And what we discovered here, that this was a man, a male, a male figure. And um, he was a, a Pharisee. Uh, he was one who was zealous in the religious rituals in the Mosaic law, according to Jewish tradition. It said that this man came to Jesus by night. Now, it doesn't matter whether he came by night or day, but it is important that he came. And he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with you. Uh, he says here, in some Bible translations, he says, except God is with him. But right now, what I'm looking at is that he says to him, Rabbi, we know. But it was only him who went to Jesus by night. So he's bringing his, his knowledge of what he understands that his tradition taught, the Jewish tradition. He said, he wondered because of the thing that Jesus was doing, the thing that he had heard and possibly seen, that he must have come from God. So there are those of a certain class that believe certain things, and they deny the truth that's within. But right here, Jesus, Jesus knew why he was coming. Whether he came at night, because he did not want others to know why he was there, or because he came at night, because he wanted to spend more time with Jesus because of his, his, his occupation. He, was, he says here he was one of the class, meaning that he was of the Sanhedrin. He, he was like uh, our justice of today, chief justice. He was an overseer. So with that type of occupation, it seemed as if he, he had no need for anything. He was popular, he was wealthy, and he had power. But he came to Jesus because he wanted to know a certain thing about salvation. And Jesus answered him. Jesus answered him before he asked the question, and that is so important for all of us. You know, 
for those who are lost and those who are baffled and those who are discouraged, those who know which way to turn, look, all you have to do is come to Jesus. That's all he's asked you to do, come. He already knows what you have need of. He already knows the questions you want to ask him. He, he already knows the problems you might have, but he's waiting for you to come. And if you come to him just as you are, I believe that God will reveal to you those things that you need to address to him. But he says here, Jesus says to him, he said, most assuredly I say to you, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God is a new and different way of living. When we enter into the kingdom of God, we enter into a new and a different way of living. So the new birth is a total new way of living. So I'm going to tell you a few things that the new birth is not. Because today we are very confused. Over this last few months, I've had a lot of people uh, that I've talked to, uh, people who have called and asked questions. And I'm sure many of you have also. But I'm just telling you my experience. And they've asked me questions. And it's unreal to see that people have been in, in the fellowship for so many years and don't really understand the new birth, what the new birth is, is all about. Yes, the new birth is being saved. The new birth is accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. The new birth is a transformation of the way we think, the way we act, the things we do. But many people do not know anything about being born again, and others have the wrong idea. And this is what we are fighting with today. They see, but they don't understand. They walk into our sanctuaries, and they see the choir singing, they hear the preacher preach, they see members clapping their hands, they see the ushers doing their job, they see all, all the beauty of a worship, but they don't understand. So they want to be a part of that. They join the fellowship. They join the fellowship because they, they, they have heard someone say to them, all you, do have, all you have to do is accept Christ and you're saved. Yes, that's true. you got to accept and believe in your heart that Christ raised Jesus from the dead and you are saved. But the key is that you've got to believe. You've got to believe what you're, what, what you're doing is the right thing. You've got to believe that, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he is God in the flesh. The key is believing, and we, we believe by exhibiting our faith and trusting in him. We stake our claim right in him that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Well, the new birth is not the same as the natural birth, all right? He says to him, I said, I sure, I most assuredly say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus asked a question to him. He said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Here's a man who is very intelligent, has a lot of knowledge about a lot of things. But the learn is now lacking. He don't understand. And there's nothing, it's nothing wrong with not understanding. But when we don't seek to understand, that's when the problem comes in. So the new bird is not the same as a natural bird. It is not, it's not a blood. You know, a natural bird is, is miraculous. Um, each one of us, we, we came here in a miraculous way, you know, where a man and a woman got together. And uh, that's the natural way, where man and woman come together. Of course, now they're, you, they're doing other things where they can take this, the seed of a man and then plant a woman. But we want to look at it the natural way, where a man and a woman come together and they engage in an activity where they are intimate with one another. And at a point of time, the, the man body releases sperms, and millions of sperms are, are dispensed. And, and they are entering into the woman. And, and eventually, the woman drops a, a, an egg, and those sperms are, are fighting to get to that egg. And that, 
appointed time, one of them penetrates, and it's like a volcanic eruption that's silent, and that egg shuts down, and the rest of the sperms die, and they are done away with. But that one sperm become who you are today. Now, just think of it. If any other sperm would have gotten in there, you wouldn't be who you are today. But that's the miraculousness of God. And then in nine months, boom, a baby is born. And then he, is, he, he or she, they develop by the natural way of life. But when they came into the world, they came with something. They came with baggage. That baggage is S-I-N, sin, a nature called sin. And that nature was transferred to us from Adam on down from generations to generations, and it even exists today. So how do we combat that, that nature there? Well, the only way we combat that nature is we must be born again. We must be born again. And this is what Nicodemus didn't understand. So the new birth does not come by entering into your mother's womb again and redeveloping and, and being born again. The new birth is not the same as the, as the natural birth. It is not of blood. Now, here's another thing. Your parents, your parents may be Christians. Your parents may be Christian, both of them, but that does not make you a Christian because your parents are Christians. Children, sisters and brothers, adults, whoever you are, because your parents were Christian, regardless of your association with others, you've got to surrender, you've got to submit, you've got to come to Christ on your own. You've got to do this. You, it, and look, it doesn't matter how you come, it doesn't matter when you come, it doesn't matter who you are. Just told you that about Nicodemus. Nicodemus, Pharisees of the Sanhedrin, he had what power, prestige, and he had money. But he was lacking. His learning was lacking. And that's a word we call ignorant. That simply means that we're lacking in knowledge. So he was ignorant to the fact. What it took to be born again. So the new birth does not come by self-will. It's not by the will of the flesh. A child cannot go back and physically remake itself. And so we, we cannot be born again by our own efforts. No matter what we have accomplished, no matter where we have been, it doesn't resonate with humility. Humility is coming to the Lord just as you are and bowing down, presenting yourself, and seeking his way of life so that the transformation can come into your life and you can be exactly what God wants you to be. What a beautiful life when we're born again. So it says here, Jesus answered, more surely I say it to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. I want to say that, sisters and brothers. We must be born again. Now, the new birth but that does not come by human help. It is not by the will of man. No man can bring a him or a her to a higher position into the church and give them the new birth. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. When we enter the church, we got to humbly listen to the word of God. Seek God for revelation of the word. We got to pay attention to what the word is saying, not the performance of the preacher, but what the word of God is saying directly to us. Now, sometimes the word, the word will cut like a two-headed sword. But I know that the word of God never goes out and come back void. So what I'm saying is that the word of God will meet you Meet your every need right where you need. He will address those situations from you. It's impossible. It's impossible for a minister to get up here and to preach to 700, maybe 900 people plus 
and know exactly what every one of them needs are. But it is possible if that minister is preaching the word of God, that the word of God can meet every one need plus. I believe that. The new word does not come by new human help. But humans are able to assist one another in receiving the new birth by pointing them to Christ, by teaching them the word of God, by living a life that's pleasing to God that will attract them to the life of God. Now, the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Salt does various things. I remember in the older days that they used to take salt and they used to preserve meat as they went along the river road, selling it in an old ice wagon. Salt, it also stabilizes. It keeps it fresh. All right, that's what it does. It keeps it, it, keeps it from spoiling. And our lives, our lives, when we walk into an atmosphere, regardless of where we are, is a reflection of, of Christ that shines in our, light, in our life. And people, you don't have to go around performing as a Christian. All you have to do is be a Christian. He said, let your light shine. He didn't say make it light shine. He said, let it shine. He energizes us. The reflection of him flows. Not of ourselves where we should boast, but of him. That's the sign of the new life. When it's evident that you live in the life of Christ. When someone can see and find out and say to you, it's something strange about you. Now that can work in two ways, but I want to go the positive way. You're a peculiar person. Why? Because you're, you're emanating the, the, the love of Christ in your life. And that flows from the heart. Not a head, it's not a head thing, it's a heart thing. Yes, we gain knowledge here, but our mind and our hearts are regulated to do the will of God. So, it also says that you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from when it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, he uses the wind for spirit here. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit influence us to endure. You know, there's times where we, we're going through things, and I know many are going through, I know I am right now. Many of us are going through things. But God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to endure these things. Sometimes we want to lash out. Sometimes we want to give up. But he's given us what's called self-control where we can withstand these things. And at other times, before we grew in our sanctification process, we would lash out. But not anymore. This is evidence of the new life. The new birth is not a physical change. Nicodemus did not understand this, but Christ showed him that it was a spiritual change. Not about a physical change. It's a spiritual change. Oh, can I go back into my mother's womb and come back a, a, a physical trans, transformation? No. Look, we can transform our bodies. We can transform our body. We go into the gym. We work out, and we transform our bodies. We go on diets. We lose weight. We transform our bodies. I mean, we, we do our makeup stuff, and we transform our physical features. But that's not what it is. It's not coming into the church, seeing how people in the church dress, going out to the mall, buying your new wardrobe, and changing the way you look. It's not about that. It's not about a, a physical change. It's about a spiritual change. It's not about not drinking. It's about a spiritual change. A physical change is stop drinking. But a spiritual change is not conforming to the behavior that I was once influenced by when I drank. 
Bible said, be ye sober. Be ye sober and vigilant. For the devil, your adversary, as a roaring lion, walking about to and fro, seeking who he may devour. Now, the devil is not a lion, but he is depicted as the king of the jungle. All right? And, and, and he walks about to and fro, seeking who he may devour. He knows that we have this nature that has the propensity to do the wrongest of wrong. And he knows that if he continue, if he continue to attack us, eventually we're going to become vulnerable and yield to the temptation that he presents. But God has given us a power, a power that come from above, that resonates in our heart, that can withstand any temptation that comes before us. The new bird is not a social or, or geographical change where people gather together and they might, they might leave here and say, I need to go. Most of the time I hear people say, oh, I'm going to Minnesota because I need, I need to change. No, 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 no. That, that, I'm not against that. If that's the aid, if that's the road God is taking you to, so be it. But our change comes from a spiritual transformation that starts within. We continue to live here, but we don't yield to the things and do the things that we one day did. We do the things that are pleasing to God and to God only. And the new word is not about a person who has a religious education, who can quote every, quote every scripture that is known to man. The new bird is not a person who goes to school, get a degree, becomes a preacher, and becomes a pastor, and tell people how to live. It's not about that. The new bird and it is. It's an experience of meeting Jesus Christ like the Apostle Paul did. Met him on this road, headed to Damascus. Lord encountered him, changed his whole way of living. Instead of, instead of persecuting Christian, he started to preach in Christian, to Christian, establishing churches. His name even changed from Saul to Paul. In other words, he wanted no more memory of his old life. His life was transformed to do what God, what was pleasing to God. That's the new birth. The new birth is, is, is not my will, but thy will be done. The new birth is not about getting rid of people in your life. The, the new birth is about helping to transform those people's lives who you once hung around with. See, 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 it's beautiful when you can go back to where you come from and those folks can recognize that there's a change in your life and they can want what you want. And listen, it don't cost you nothing to tell them about Jesus because the gift we receive has been freely given. The new birth is not a religious be belief. We can be sincere in religious convictions and we can be baptized, we can join church, we can take communion, we can teach Sunday school, we can be offered in the church, and I've talked about one going to school, becoming a preacher, and becoming a pastor. Jesus is talking to the one of the most religious sincere mortal men of his day, and he told him that he needed to be born again. He needed to be born again. We too, sisters and brothers, need to be born again. Now, I've told you what is not, what born again is not. Now let me tell you what born again is. And I've alluded to that. The new birth is a spiritual change. How do we get it? God is the only one who can bring about this change in our life. 
We seek, we knock, and we ask. Jesus said, do not marvel. We should not be surprised that the new birth is necessary. It's necessary. We say we saved. Yeah, we do all these religious activities. But are we living the life that's pleasing to God? There's a difference here. I'm not talking about a life that's pleasing to our fellow man. A life that's first pleasing to God. Because see, sometimes we live a life that's pleasing to God that's not pleasing to our fellow man. Our job is to love our neighbor as ourselves. Our job is to do unto others as we do, would have them do unto us. Problem is, a lot of times we don't know how we want to be done unto. So we just treat people any kind of way. The new, the new birth, the new life is about reaching out to someone who is lost. You know, if this is so good, if this is so good to us, it's like that, that, that apple pie I ate the other day. It was so good, I told a friend, man, you've got to taste it. You've got to go to Winn-Dixie, you've got to get this pie. It's so great. See, I want you to taste and see that this life is great. It's, it's, it's a better way of living. We must be born again. We must be born again because without the new birth, we do not possess a spiritual nature. We are defeated. We cannot stand against the wiles of the devil. I told you, I mentioned to you that when Adam sinned, that sin was passed on to all of us. And I've mentioned that this nature is hostile. It's contrary to the will of God. It does not submit to God. And worst of all, by not being born again, we cannot understand the things of God. You've ever seen someone who changed their life? Is, you know they're a Christian. You just know it. I mean, they're the salt, they're the, they're the light, they're just a reflection, they're just glowing. They're so kind, they're so sweet. And you know it's genuine, you know it's not false, fake. But you just don't understand how that person can be that way all the time. Well, let me tell you this day, that it is the power of God that resonates in them. And this power that is present in your, in your life it will never, it will never ever lose its power. The presence of that holy, divine being in our life will never ever lose his power. We can train the flesh, we can improve it, we can make it look different, we can even participate in religion activities, but we cannot change our own nature. It, it is Totally up to God himself. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We must be born again because without the new birth we cannot see the kingdom of God nor enter into it. The kingdom of God. Listen. I've heard that we we are seated in heavenly places. I was taught that. I was taught that we can experience the kingdom of God right here, right now, on this earth. I was taught that right here. And when I heard that, I marveled because I wanted that. I wanted, I wanted to win the war within. And I was instructed right here. That you can talk to God anytime, anywhere, and all you have to do is talk to him because he already hear what you're saying. So I give that a try. And I realize that I can enjoy those things that God has created for us. I can enjoy the people in spite of that God has created. 
I can go beyond what I expected because of what God has done. I can supersede my own thoughts based on what God has done. And I marvel at the fact at what God is doing in our lives. My sisters and brothers, but we've got to value the kingdom of God. We've got to enter into it. And we've got to be clear. We've got to be very sure that our lives line up with what's pleasing to God. We got to make our decision based on the fact that is this pleasing to God? The things I do, the things I think, the things I say, are these things pleasing to God? The spiritual birth come from God. Born again can also mean born from above. Born from above. So we can say it any kind of way. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm born from above. But we must be born again. Romans 8 and 9 said, as God saw these people, they were no longer in the flesh. They were in the spirit. It is the work of the Spirit of God when they accept Christ as Savior. Oh, that is so beautiful. When God looked down on us and he sees us working in harmony to do those things that are pleasing to him. When God, when God sees us when we come into this sanctuary, when we return to this sanctuary and we take our seats on these, these benches or these pews, when we take our right position on a musical instrument, when God sees us and we, we, fill, we fill the choir stand and we lift up holy hands, when we come in a, a righteous way, in a humble way, in a way that's pleasing to God, and listen, when we get back in here, no one would have to tell us can I get an amen? When we get back into this place, no one will have to tell us how to worship God. Because right now, sisters and brothers, we're going through some trying time. We're going through some rough stages of our lives. And if we are separated from Christ, what is our life? What is our life if we're separated from Christ? We are dead spiritually and we are defeated. If we are dead spiritually, how can we get spiritual life? The answer is simple. If we confess our sins, if we hear the Son of God speaking to us, if we receive his word and we believe in our heart what he says, if we trust him as Savior, if we receive what he say to be true, then that seed will grow in us. And John 5, 24 and 5 say, his word will give us spiritual life and we will be born again. Being born again is living a life here on planet Earth, fighting this fleshly battle. The flesh well against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, deeds to our contrary against one another. The one that we feed the most, the one that we yield to, will give us the satisfaction that we desire. Whether it's the satisfaction to damnation or the satisfaction to eternal life. Satisfaction to damnation separates us from God, brings us to eternal hell. Satisfaction to spiritual life give us eternal life, the life of God. Can we only imagine? 
Someone say, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine. Can you imagine? I can't. But I hope and I pray, my sisters and brothers, as I close, that this life that we've evaluated, that's all I wanted you to do. Just take an evaluation, a fearless moral inventory of your life and see if your life lines up with God. And if it does, then help somebody else to get where you are by telling them about this Savior. Look, Nicodemus came at night. Don't matter. Nicodemus had a lot of possession. That don't matter. You can't take nothing with you. You brought nothing into this world, and you surely take nothing out of this world. Being born again is a life of joy. It's a life of peace. It's a life of healing. Most of all, it's a life of love. It's a life of God. I want to close with this by asking if there's anyone, anyone, who do not know the Lord, please just approach him right now. He's in your presence, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Step aside and ask him to come into your life. It's a reward in life. It supersedes the life that you're living right now. And most of all, it's free. My pastor would say, it's not cheap, but it's free. Will you accept him? Jesus Christ is Lord. Will you accept him? Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for the simplicity of your word. We thank you, O oh God, that you've placed on my heart the call to repent. The call to take a fearless moral inventory to evaluate where we are right now in our walk with Christ. And Lord, if our ways don't line up with your ways, we ask for forgiveness. We ask that you would heal us. We ask that you would establish our goings. We want to give you all that you deserve. And that's our total surrender to you. Have your way, Lord, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.